Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we have some pretty good stuff. First up, legendary investor says not owning any Bitcoin has been a massive mistake. So the question really comes down to this. How high can Bitcoin go and how much should people put in their portfolio? Also, we take a look at Virginia tech firm offering staff options to get paid in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin Cash. So when I take a look at this, I think to myself, what does the future look like? And are we all gonna be working from home and getting paid in cryptocurrency, or will it be just the same old thing? And finally, we take a look at the question, the value of Cardano's treasury reaching 100 million, and what does that do for the Cardano Foundation, and what does that do as far as voting? So we'll get into both of those topics, but first, let's take a look at one important piece of information, which is we hit 100K. So I want to tell everybody thanks so much for uh, subscribing. It means a lot. When we first started this channel, uh, it really was just to be the most basic that we could do. Just uh, some news, some information, and try to ground people and not be so much into the uh, sensationalism. Like, you know, uh, Bitcoin's going to a million tomorrow and you're going to be a billionaire or something crazy like that. So we try to do those things, talk about dollar cost averaging and, and not get really outside of, uh, of too much as far as the craziness. So moving forward, we want to do the exact same thing uh, just to more people. So again, thanks so much for uh, subscribing 100K. Uh, and again, like I've always said, I think 2021 is going to be everybody's year for crypto and digital assets. So thanks. I appreciate it. So first up, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is, uh, what is it? January 25th, uh, high noon El Paso, Texas time. So here's what we got. Uh, Bitcoin's up 8%. It's a pretty good day, right? So we were down to 29,000. Bitcoin had chopped to 41. Now it's down to, and then went 29,000. Now we're 33. So this is just extreme volatility. If you are new to the digital asset market, first of all, welcome. And second of all, um, this is not unnormal for these high fluctuations. So uh, if you're from the traditional market and you, came, you come over, just know that sometimes there's 20%, 40%, 60% <laughs> gains and uh, dips. So uh, that is just the price of being in the game. A lot of you guys uh, in the old space would talk about, hey, I made 12% this year and it was a great year. Well, we just call that a Tuesday, so it's not a big deal. So just be prepared. And if you wanna be here, just have ice in your veins and know that this is normal. Ethereum uh, up 4.6%, 1384. Uh, USDT or Tether up 2%, sure. Dots at uh, 2.1, XRP. XRP almost almost tied to the, to the quarter. Cardano up 3.2, anything great? Anything like super fantastic uh, gains? Not really. Ooh, Theta. Congratulations all your Theta holders at 14.5%. Uh, that is me. <laughs> so um, real quick, on this channel, I have to be completely honest with you. And that is, I am totally biased <laughs> towards all of my picks. Uh, and I usually cover a lot of those a lot more than things that I don't actually invest into. I try to delve away from it, but it is just true. Now, I invest a lot into a lot of different cryptocurrencies or assets. But uh, if you see me talk about some things uh, and stop, it's just because I'm biased. That's just the truth. So let's take a look at if we had actually invested just into Bitcoin, how would we have done? Because that's the big question. If you're gonna do all this research and time, how would you do if you just would invest into something else? Well, for most things, you'd be down for today. But for Ethereum, you'd be up 20% for the week. So, hey, so that's a good thing. Uh, USDT is a stable coin, so no. Uh, DOT, you'd be up 10% for the week, but you'd be down 5% for today. And if you just look at the 24 hour time frame, which is kind of gives you like a rough estimate, most things would be down, except for Theta, sure. Tron and VeChain. Celsius, you'd be up a whopping 0.1%. So when you're doing all these trades and doing everything else, just make sure that you're not making or over complicating your life and just see what could be um, a really safe bet. Now, having said all that, my price prediction for Bitcoin this year is 150,000. Some people say 400, some people say a million, but those people are crazy, not just me. So um, for all these things, you have to understand that really in, in actuality, you're only looking at like, Right now it's around 30,000. So you're looking at a 5X, which any other place that'd be awesome. But here again, that's just 5X. Ethereum, I think could be a big play, but there's problems with that. I talk about that in my 2021 price prediction, uh, dots and everything else. But uh, just take a look at what it could be and uh, what it is right now. So that's it for the market. Let's jump into today's top story, huh? So this one was pretty good. Miller is the legendary investor talking about, about not owning Bitcoin has been a massive mistake. What is he talking about here? 
Well, first of all, uh, Bill Miller, really senior wrote there over the past decade, not owning a Bitcoin, been a massive mistake. I would have to agree. Over the last 10 years, the best performing asset has been Bitcoin. So I don't understand how different hedge funds that are out there, different financial analysts, which let me just be, be clear, I am not a financial analyst. I cannot give you investment advice. These are just the things that I do and I find interesting. So uh, I can't give you any advice. Don't listen to me, do your own research. But Miller here, uh, he's done his own research and he says, hey, I'm a financial planner and you should be investing into Bitcoin. So I don't understand these, all these different companies that are like, no, it's going to zero or no, you shouldn't invest into it. I'm like, you know, you're doing malpractice essentially, or financial malfeasance, I guess, uh, when you're not, not recommending Bitcoin. Because if you would do that, and not to put in 100%, but just put in like 1% to 3%, maybe 2 to 4% as a hedge against the market, uh, I think that would be a viable option. I'm big into uh, diversification. I have multiple, multiple cryptocurrencies. I also invest in a gold and silver. I also have stocks and bonds. I also have land and houses. I just don't see why someone would say, you know what, tomato coin, 100 million, put it all in there. That's crazy. But uh, I mean, it, it, whatever you want to do. So Miller is the founder, chairman, and, and CIO of investment firm Miller Value Partners, as well as the portfolio manager of firms, mutual funds, opportunity equity. So my question always is this, great. So you are a great investor. What do you do as far as assets under management? Because that's the big thing. How are you doing? Because that really, to me, signifies trust. People trust you to give you their money to invest for them. And uh, Miller Value, as of December 31st, uh, they have 3.5 billion. So, all right, pretty good, uh, pretty big company. I mean, there's no BlackRock with their whatever it is, six trillion dollars asset under management. But still, a couple of billion dollars. I don't have a couple of billion dollars, so good for these guys. So it is important to note that Miller is not your average fund manager. Miller's 15-year streak uh, has beat the S&P 500 and still a benchmark that no active manager can touch. So this guy is really good at beating the S&P 500, which are all the top 500 companies uh, that you could invest in. And then as those, those companies slip, the new ones get put in. Now, in all honesty, the S&P 500, yeah, it is. But I mean, really, it's, you know, the big four companies, which is uh, uh, Microsoft, Apple, Google, uh, Facebook, I think that's, uh, there's one more, but that's pretty much 25% of the entire S&P 500 tech. So anyhow, but he's beat them for 15 years. So good for guys. Like I said, good for him. Here is the actual interview, which I will link in the description below, but this is the big thing on January 21st. This is what he said, not owning any Bitcoin, massive mistake. And we expect that will continue to be true. A long-term candlestick chart shows progressively higher lows despite significant volatility, clearly representing growing demand from long-term holders willing to tolerate the swings, which is me and you. There is a 12-year track record of demand growing consistently faster than supply. Almost every long-term holder of Bitcoin has earned a higher rate of return in Bitcoin than in anything else. So congratulations. If, if you've been holding since 2010, good for you. That's amazing to me. Uh, or if you just got into the game, just hold and uh, usually things go up. You can do all the trading you wanna do. Me personally, I do a little bit of trading. And the only time I do it is when I'm talking to uh, CJ and Weston and we do this thing called Trinity Trading. You can check those videos out. There's like once a week, but that's it. And it's like 1% of my portfolio, I'll be honest with you. It's like nothing. But some people like to do 5%, 10%. But again, I can't tell you what to do. It's all up to you. Miller addressed some of the common criticism of Bitcoin. And this is where I think is the real value of this whole article. We know where Bitcoin is going to go. Some of us need a little reassurance. That's why I always do these, these videos. But you're going to come across, you're going to come to the next family function or your coworker or even your, your significant other like, that's a scam. So he addressed two of the big ones. He says, hey, there's one that people talk about. Bitcoin is nothing but a Ponzi scheme. And you will hear this from a lot of some, not a lot, some economists like uh, uh, Robini, Dr. Doom. And you'll, you'll hear it from that gold bug guy. I do not say his name on this channel because I can't stand him. Uh, and it, it, it goes like this. He goes, look, as far as Bitcoin, this is easiest to address because it demonstrates a lack of understanding of both Bitcoin and Ponzi schemes. Bitcoin is the opposite. Ponzi schemes involve a central criminal extracting value from all the investors then using new investors' money to fund redemptions while falsifying stated returns. 
which is exact, and it's true because with Bitcoin, everything is decentralized. There's no centralized middleman. That's what makes it great. Satoshi Nakamoto, I hope that guy stays gone. I don't want him to ever come back. We need him to just get out of the limelight because that would be a centralized figure. With Bitcoin, there's no centralized figure. And on top of that, when we talk about uh, the value, as the value rises, it's not, it doesn't just go to like, like the new people or the older people, like in some kind of uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, it gets spread out amongst all of us. So again, it's not, it's not a Ponzi scheme. I'm glad he you know, brought that up. And then the next one, the big criticism is, well, it's going to be banned by take your country. And he says, you know what? Uh, it's worked for 12 years with little regulatory interference under multiple administrations. Look, we got Biden now. We had Trump before, and then we had Obama. So in those in America, I don't know where you're at, uh, but prime ministers and uh, chancellors, they get moved around all the time. It's been around for 12 years. Nobody's banned it yet. And good luck banning it because guess what? Bitcoin doesn't live in my computer or some central bank. There's 10,000 nodes spaced out through the globe, so I don't understand how you could do that. And then this one was interesting. In 2014, a senior member of the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis studied Bitcoin and concluded that enforcing an outright ban is close to impossible. Well-run central banks should welcome the emerging competition. So I agree on the first part. It's hard to ban, but I don't... <laughs> like the next part where he says, well, with central banks sh should welcome the emerging competition. I don't think that's going to happen. So to finish up, the new head of the SEC, Gary Gensler, if uh, you haven't seen my videos on him, he actually gave a talk at MIT, and he talked about Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Ripple, and he pretty much lays out exactly what it is. He is giving a speech to these geniuses at MIT. This guy knows crypto. And he says, the new head, Gensler, is a Bitcoin fan. While we believe the next decade will see adoption grow at a much faster rate than it did during Bitcoin's first decade. So if that is true, I think we're going to see a pretty great year. Miller pointed out, though, and this is important to note, that his fund that he invested in Bitcoin by buying convertible securities tied to Bitcoin. That convertible security is MicroStrategies, 0.75% convertible senior notes due 2025. So what MicroStrategy has done is they are a tech company and they got heavy into Bitcoin. And they got so heavy into Bitcoin, now people are saying that MicroStrategy is essentially an ETF because if you invest in the <laughs> MicroStrategy, you really invest in the Bitcoin. So uh, sure, and then of course they're talking about uh, senior notes due 2025. Whatever it is, this guy's a believer in Bitcoin, and uh, I couldn't be happier. So let me know what you think in the comments section. And uh, for me, I think this is a big case. I just, it's, it's not so much about telling you what, what, what other people think, but you have to understand that people who are in the investment uh, realm, they look up to this guy. They look up to a Paul Tudor Jones. They look up to the mass mutuals, and they say, you know what? If they're doing it, maybe we should take a harder look at what's going on with Bitcoin. And again, it's just social proof. Anyhow, in the comment section, whatever you want to say, let's move on to our next piece. This one. Uh, this one was interesting because, hey, I think this could be the future. Um, I was actually watching a show this weekend, Good Morning America or something, like, I forgot what it was, but they were talking about how the shifting enterprise as far as people who are working from home as opposed to working into offices because they, they talked about how in the beginning, offices and big businesses would what they would say you know what we can't work from home it's not productive it's a very big negative and now that they've actually been forced to do it they're like you know what this works out pretty great so i think in the future uh we're going to see a lot of people working from home which is why i think we're going to need a lot of bandwidth which is why i think zoom's going to be big but also i think theta is going to be big and you can check out my videos about theta uh in the uh, description but we're going to need a lot of bandwidth and we can only uh, do so much. So there's the one part. The next part is how are we going to get paid? I think this is the answer. So Virginia Tech firm offers staff options to get paid in Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum. So this is Sequoia Holdings and it's offering the, their staff the option to set aside a portion of their salary and invest it in cryptocurrency. So it's kind of weird, first of all, and I'll get into why. So Sequoia Holdings is based in Reston, Virginia and provides engineering and analytic solutions to the United States national security sector, including intelligence, defense, and homeland security. Interesting. And these guys are like, you know what? We do all that stuff, but we're going to give you guys Bitcoin. The company's employees will be able to choose to defer, defer a portion of their salary and have it invested in either Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, or Ethereum. And they kind of say, well, this is like our company's 401k. But 
you this is calculated after tax deduction. So you get paid a thousand dollars a week or whatever it is, right? And then you get your your tax at twenty five percent, whatever. So now you get seven fifty. So that seven fifty, they're gonna say however much you want to to go to you. Let's say you want five hundred and you want two hundred fifty bucks to go and do uh, cryptocurrency. We'll do it for you, and we have a third party that can be the uh, custodian, so you don't have to worry about it. They're like, great. Well, I'll just do that. I don't know if, that, if that's really the right way to do it. Again, when you give up a lot of your control, um, a lot of other people are making a lot of money when you do that. So then I'll tell you why in a second. So all crypto savings will be held in digital wallet, be managed by the same third party processor. And this is what the CEO of Sequoia said. He says, many of our employees are enthusiastic supporters of crypto and we're happy to help them gain exposure to this trillion dollar asset class. Crypto has emerged as an important alternative to traditional investments like stocks and bonds. So I'm going to say like this, this guy's completely right. I totally agree with what he's talking about. I still have stocks uh, because I still believe that there's a lot of companies that could do really well. Tesla being one of them, Amazon being another one, and then Mara, uh, which is uh, uh, mining for Bitcoin. But those are the things that I get into. I'm not telling you what to do. So when you have this type of thing and you're, you're saying, okay, well, you tax me, tax my salary, and then take that money and put that into cryptocurrency, that's fine. But you have another piece to that, and that is capital gains tax. So you just got taxed on your income. That's, that's how it goes. Then you invest in a Bitcoin. Let's say that you, for, let's say you're a baller, right? And you get paid $30,000 per week, or let's say 40,000, 40,000. You get, you're taxed at 25, 33%, whatever else it is. So you're left with 30,000. And you know, you know what? Just put it all into Bitcoin. So every week I'm going to get one Bitcoin. At the end of the month, you got four Bitcoins. Let's say that Bitcoin that you bought at $30,000 appreciates to what I think is going to be $150,000. Well, now guess what happens? If you want to cash out before a year, those are long, or sorry, short-term capital gains. And you're going to get taxed to the wazoo again. So you get double taxed. And then if you wait, well, okay, I'll wait till after a year and I'll let it sit. Well, there's a dip coming. I'm just letting you know. I mean, if you look at the four-year cycles, it doesn't matter. You're going to pay a little bit less in tax, but it's going to be like around 20% for your long-term capital gains tax. So again, you get taxed on your salary, you're gonna get taxed on those uh, capital gains tax. That's what they're doing. Me personally, this is what I am doing, just so you know, it's called iTrust, and it is a cryptocurrency IRA. So if you have a traditional IRA, um, or you have an old employer plan like a 401k, 403b, military TSB, or 457, when you put that into this crypto IRA, again, there's different, uh, parts of this. There is a, uh, a traditional, uh, a SEP and a Roth uh, IRA. In the link in the description below, there is going, well, there's a, there's a link in the description below. And there's a video that, that I, I made, it's about 19, 20 minutes or so, and it just talks about all the different types of uh, IRAs that you can get into. So if you do this and you get into this IRA, whatever your cryptocurrency appreciates to, you cannot get taxed on that. They, they will not tax you on that. And that's one of those, those loopholes, to be honest with you. Also, what is coming in the future, I think this is going to be quarter two, maybe, or quarter three. They're going to allow for Ethereum staking in your IRA. So imagine this, and we'll get into this in a second. You, you put Ethereum into your crypto IRA with iTrust. Then they're going to stake it for you. Then you get, so you get, you get how much ever the, the, the percentage is every, every single month or however long it gets paid out. That also doesn't get taxed because whatever things appreciate in the IRA, you don't get taxed on. And that is why that is part of my portfolio. Now, here's the thing. This is only for uh, U.S. citizens. In Europe, there's a, a different program. I'm not for sure what it is, but I know iTrust doesn't do it yet. Hopefully they will. And if you get into that, it just kind of offsets things. But the problem is, is that in America, you can only put up to $7,000 per year. But again, diversification. You put a little bit here, you put a little bit in a Celsius and Voyager, you get some, uh, some revenue from, from the yield right over there. You do other types of staking, like with uh, DNews staking pool. And then uh, you, maybe you take out a crypto loan. It's all these types of things that you can do with cryptocurrency. So don't just be stuck into one thing. And then also the last thing I'll say about iTrust is that, and I didn't know this, you can pass it down uh, to, to whoever you want to, kind of like, kind of like a trust, but not a real trust. So let's say you have this iTrust, <laughs> crypto, crypto IRA, 
and you pass away, and then in the will you say, my wife gets it, my daughter gets it, my kids get it, my grandkids get it, uh, they don't have to pay any penalties and any taxes as well, and they can actually start to withdraw from that at any time. They don't have to wait till a certain age. So again, if you're looking for that, there's a link in the description and check that out. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. Okay, next up, the value of Cardano's treasury reaches 100 million. This one's gonna go pretty quick because uh, this one's going kind of long. So the question is, why is the Cardano treasury important to the community? Why is, who cares about 100 million? Well, the goal of the Cardano treasury is to provide funds to develop the Cardano blockchain through a voting process. And I'm gonna get into voting. If you own Cardano, if you own Cardano and own Ethereum, you gotta stick around for this one. Okay, especially for voting. Cardano's treasury is funded through several different channels, which includes taking a percentage of stake pool rewards and transaction fees, holding back a portion of newly minted coins and accepted occasional donations of charity. The funds held in the treasury are meant to finance various projects, we'll get into that, and proposals for improving the blockchain, which are chosen through community votes. So what are we talking about here? I'm gonna get into voting in a second. And the treasury is great, but what does that mean? Well, first of all, I wanna talk about staking. This is called Pool Tool. This is PoolTool.io. I'll link that in the description as well. I want you to notice something at the very top right here. Let me blow this up so you can see a little better. See that right there? It says Pool Tool on that. It says total staked, 22.1 billion. 22.1 billion. And then underneath there it says the total supply is 31 billion. So almost 70, I'm gonna say again, almost 70% of all the Cardano in existence right now that is circulating is being staked. Can you believe that? So let's take a look of what Ethereum is being staked. This is from beaconchain.in and the staked Ether is 2,260,132 ETH. So let's just say 2 million. Let's just, keep a, let's just keep it simple. You got 22 billion over here and you got 2 million over here. What is the total supply? This is Cardano. The circulating supply is 31 billion right now, 45 max. 31 billion, 45 max. And, and Ethereum, what do we have? Circulating supply, 114 million. So what does that mean? What this means to me is that Cardano, amazingly, has so much of their of their ADA that is being locked up right now, that is being staked, it is crushing Ethereum. I know people will talk about, well, Ethereum is really, it's, it's, it's much superior and there's a lot of things being built on it, whatever else. That's very true. It's being, a ton is being built on it, but that's why the fees are so god awful right now. So if you have, if, when you take a look at different projects, right, and you wanna see like, what is the community doing? What are the developers doing? How are they leading? How, how, who do they have on their team and what is going on? I invest in both. Again, I'm biased. I invest in Ethereum because I think it's gonna be great. I invest in Cardano, I think it's gonna be really great. Actually, I don't know which one's gonna be fantastic, that's why I invest into both of them. But if you take a look at the experience of staking, and I will challenge you right now, you can go out and stake your Ethereum, and go ahead and try it, right? There's also this thing called slashing rewards, you have to lock it up for, it could be a year, it could be two years, it could be six months, don't really know. But the, the uh, predictions is about a year. If you wanna lock up uh, your Cardano, you can lock it up with anybody, you can move it around, it never leaves your wallet, it stays right there, and there's no slashing fees. What are slashing fees? Slashing fees is if you don't have everything up and, and your, your pool isn't really working, then you could lose some of your Ethereum. That doesn't have happened in Cardano. In Cardano, if you don't have your, your pool up, you just don't get the rewards. So, I mean, it still sucks, but I mean, at least you're not losing everything. So, I've always talked about this. Cardano made the staking experience perfect. Nah, I can't say perfect. It made it really good, we'll say that. A lot better than with uh, Ethereum, that is for sure. So, real quick, if you are interested in any type of uh, staking with your Cardano, if you have Cardano, if you're one of the people that is outside that 69%, then I would have you consider Digital Asset News or the DNews stake pool. So just so you know, pool.io or pooltool.io, if you do a search for DNews, you can see right here, these are epic. I know people say, well, it's, ep it's Epoch, Rob. Well, Charles Hoskins says, says Epic. I'm just gonna go with that, Epic. So there's the fee, variable fee. What is that? I explained in a video, I'll show it to you in a second. Here's Epic 242, 
because every epoch is five days and it's about 4%. But just so you know, we're not doing so hot on this one, but usually it's between four and 6%. That is the industry average for all the stake pools and our lifetime uh, return on spend is uh, 6%. So not too bad. If you're looking for the stake pool, just go to danteachescrypto.com. But actually there's a link in the description, a little bit down, I'll show you in a bit. But uh, if you go to this page right here, and then you just scroll down to this handy dandy video, which is right here, it's about, uh, I think, 13, 14 minutes, and explains exactly what Cardano staking is, how simplified it is, how you can stake to DNews and everything else that goes along with that. And then just consider us. If you don't, hey, there's other options out there, and we even show you all the different uh, wallets and everything that's out there. So just give us a little bit of a peek. And that is the big thing. So that is staking. Now I want to talk to you about the voting, because I really didn't understand this uh, for a while, so I had to figure this out. But if you go to cardano.org, governance, I'll again link in the description. If you scroll down, what the heck are we talking about as far as voting? Well, voting or governance, it's a mechanism through which a system makes decisions. Uh, in Cardano, every token holder, you, uh, holds a stake in the network and is entitled and incentivized to vote on proposals to develop or upgrade in the blockchain ecosystem. For FPs, those are funding proposals, this is done through a dedicated voting app. What the heck is that? I'll show you what that is. This dedicated voting app, oops, wrong one. If you just, first of all, really this, this link should be on, on this page. I don't know why it's not. Maybe it is and I'm missing it, but I didn't see it. So if you look up Cardano voting app, if you could spell, I can't spell, so I get an autocorrect. Cardano voting app, let me blow this up. So, it's called Catalyst. And if you go here, it, it's an app that looks like this and you can vote on what you want things to be funded. And there is one for Google, there is one for Apple. Again, you have to do a search. I don't know uh, why it's not here. Maybe it is, I just missed it. Uh, talk to me in the comments below, but I, didn't, I had to do a search for it. But that's the app that you use and you can vote on what you feel is the best bet for things to be funded. An example could include uh, funding future platform development, developing new capabilities or integrations. Once a proposal is submitted, it can be voted on by any ADA holder, no technical knowledge. Each vote requires a temporary deposit of ADA, and the most successful proposals will receive funds from the Treasury, that $100 million we were just talking about. Now you got CIPs, and those are Cardano Improvement Proposals. Those are a little bit different. They are publicly visible to the community for discussion, located in the Cardano Foundation GitHub's repository. Uh, proposal protocol level changes. So if you want to take a look at that, it is right here when you just click on that link. And you can just take a look at what is going on uh, as far as what they are talking about as far as improvements to the network and everything else. You can take a look at that. I did, it was pretty dry. Let me see if I have, let's just take a look. Uh, well, this is the process. Meeting notes. And it looks something like this. So. Go ahead and take a look at that if you want to. I found this quite boring, but uh, that's just me because I have uh, poor attention skills. And that's really what it comes down to. Okay, so that is the big stuff. Let me, uh, hopefully that made a little bit of a sense, a little, little bit of sense about uh, as far as the voting process, how much is actually being locked up as far as staking with Cardano versus Ethereum. And then if you watch that video I talked about, which is at danteachescrypto.com, just click on ADA uh, staking. There's a video and explains, I mean, really, it's, it's, a, it's a far superior way for staking for us. I'm sure, I mean, Ethereum has a lot of different things that are superior, Cardano, debatable, but uh, that is where we're at right now. And that is why I believe that in 2021, Cardano will go to $3 at minimum, and that's my conservative guess. It's a guess. All right, so I know I went a little bit long. Apologize, I tried to condense it as best I could, but uh, there's a lot of great things going on in this space. And again, I think 2021 is our year. So if you uh, like those types of videos, do me a favor, uh, hit the like button, subscribe. I never asked for that. I should, I'm should. i gonna start doing that more of it. Also, if you like this video, as we more just like it, on, and it's gonna pop up on the left and right, I'll let YouTube do its magic. And that is all for today. So thanks so much for staying all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. And uh, again, thanks for those 100,000 subscribers. We are humbled. See you in the next one.